Trina? The goal of object detection is to localize objects in images. Generally, this problem is reduced to image classification by extracting a lot of regions from the image and learning to classify each one of them individually. However, this introduces new problems in training not found in image classification. The detection datasets have a large imbalance between annotated foreground objects and background examples. For sliding window detectors like DPMs, this ratio can be as high as 100,000 background to one foreground. And even though using regions have mitigated this problem a bit, the ratio can still be pretty skewed. Unsurprisingly, this is not a new problem and a standard solution has existed for at least 20 years called bootstrapping which is an algorithm to select hard exa examples for training object detectors. One of the first systems to use bootstrapping was by Sung and Poggio. The algorithm was, given a training set of face and non-face examples, train a face detector, then use this detector on non-face images to find false positives or hard negatives, and add them to the negative set. Finally, use this new training set to retrain or update your model. This results in a very simple algorithm where we first fix the training set and train or update our model. Then we freeze our model to find hard negatives to add to our training set. And we continue to do so iteratively. Forms of bootstrapping have been widely used in object detection. Systems ranging from shallow neural networks and booster decision trees to training SVMs on hog and now convnet features all have used bootstrapping. But unfortunately, due to technical difficulties, the latest state-of-the-art object detectors like FAST and faster RCNN had to abandon this well-trusted hard negative mining. The core reason behind this is the trend of moving from multi-stage training pipelines to end-to-end -end learnable systems. Object detection has also followed this trend, which has led to improved accuracy and much simpler training. We moved from systems like RCNN, which use hard mining to train SVMs, to systems like fast RCNN, which are trained using stochastic gradient descent, or SGD. And unlike SVMs, it's not trivial to incorporate hard mining in an SGD framework, and that's why it has not been used. But why is it not trivial? Recall that in bootstrapping, we alternate between updating our model and freezing our model to find hard negatives. Now, training a modern object detector requires hundreds of thousands of SGD iteration, and freezing it, even for a few iteration, is going to drastically slow down our training, and no one really wants that. What we need is a purely online form of selecting hard examples, which plays nicely with stochastic gradient descent. So to address these issues, we propose a new bootstrapping technique, which we creatively call online hard example mining, which is a simple modification to the SGD training paradigm where instead of sampling randomly, we sample from a non-uniform, non-stationary distribution. Our method simplifies training by removing several heuristics and hyperparameters, and while doing so, provides consistent and significant performance gains. And more importantly, it can be easily applied to most state-of-the-art object detectors. So now let's look at how an object detector like FastRCNN is trained using SGD. For efficient training, they use hierarchical sampling where, given a training set of images and regions, it first samples a small number of images randomly and then samples regions from these images to construct a mini-batch. Now, randomly sampling these regions will lead to a mini-batch with mostly background examples because of the dataset imbalance we discussed. So many heuristics and hyperparameters are used to make nice mini-batches. For example, a prefix ratio to balance foreground and background examples. And as we'll see later, our method automatically makes mini-batches without needing any of these heuristics. So for standard fast RCNN training, they first sample a random image from the dataset, run a convolutional network, and get the last convolutional feature map. Then, given all the regions in an image, they heuristically sample a mini-batch and map these sampled regions to the convolutional feature map. Their corresponding feature maps are resized and appended and finally, they have a small network on top of these regions, which we call the region network or the ROI network. After computing a forward pass through this ROI network, they compute the loss and gradients, 
update the ROI network using backward pass. And finally, they accumulate the gradients and update the convnet. Now, how can we incorporate bootstrapping in this framework? Our main contribution is figuring out how to combine these alternating steps of bootstrapping with the standard online SGD. The key is taking advantage of this problem structure, where even though we sample a small number of images for each iteration, each of those images have thousands of example regions to look at. So instead of heuristically selecting examples for a mini batch, we can select the hard examples. Now the question is, how can we do this efficiently? How can we efficiently freeze our model to find hard examples? The key observation here is that during one iteration of SGD, we are already freezing our model for the inference or forward pass operation. So for incorporating bootstrapping, instead of heuristically sampling regions like before, we use all the regions during forward pass and compute, a, compute their losses. Now, based on these losses, we can select the hard regions and compute gradients only for the selected hard regions. Then like before, you can go ahead and update your model. But is this procedure efficient? Notice that most of the computational heavy lifting is done by the convnet operations, which remain unchanged. Another expensive step is doing backward pass for updating the model, which also remains unchanged. The only thing that changes is the forward pass and loss computation for the ROI network, where instead of using a few hundred regions, we use a few thousands, which in practice adds about 0.3 seconds per iteration during training. Now, based on these losses, we can simply select the highest ranking losses, uh, regions for a mini batch. But there is a small problem. Co-located regions with high overlap, such as these two, will likely have correlated losses, which is not good. Moreover, because of resolution disparity, these highly overlapping regions map to the exact same location in the feature map, which will lead to double counting of losses. So to deal with these redundant and correlated regions, we use the simple non-max suppression or NMS for deduplication. So this gives us a very simple algorithm. Sort the ROIs based on their losses, do NMS for deduplication, and select the top remaining regions for your mini batch. Now that we have seen how simple our method is, let's see how much it helps on standard benchmarks. On VOC 2007 and 2012, both when using the standard splits and with extra data, we see a consistent 3 to 4 point boost. On MS Coco dataset, we again see consistent boost across all metrics. For example, we see a more than 6 point boost on the AP50 metric and a 5 point boost for medium sized objects on the stricter Coco metric. Now let's compare the proposed approach to uh, some other uh, heuristic approaches that have been used for hard mining. One such approach is instead of considering all the background regions for sampling, only those regions are considered which have some minimum threshold overlap with the ground truth box. We call this the hard, heuristic hard mining approach. Now compared to random sampling, this heuristic does give some improvement for the VGG medium network, but none for the VGG 16 network. And our proposed online sampling provides more than two point boost over this heuristic across both networks. Another heuristic is to do no sampling at all and use all the regions during training. Now to mimic this, we first increase the batch size and carefully adjust the learning rate. And we observe that using this setting gives us a 1.5 boost over the standard heuristic method. But using our method not only performs better, but is much faster to train without the need for adjusting hyperparameters. Now we have seen that our method quantitatively performs better than the alternatives such as random or heuristic mining and no sampling at all. But which of these alternatives leads to better training? To study this, we plot mean loss per region across all the regions in the training dataset. We see that compared to random sampling, the heuristic hard mining performs better but doing no sampling at all is even better. And finally, our method leads to the lowest loss across all alternatives, which means it's not only performing better, but also training the model better. Now, we don't have a clear theoretical understanding of why this happens, but it is an interesting future direction to explore. Finally, we want to show that our approach is orthogonal to other recent advances in the field of object detection, such as multi-scale training and testing from SPPNet and iterative localization from multi-region CNNs. 
After these additions, we get a further boost of 4 to 5 points consistently. So you can use best of both the worlds. And when we add even more data from MS Coco, we improve to 80.1 mean average precision, which is currently the highest number on the leaderboard amongst methods using VGT16 network. We are also happy to report that the community has already started using these pro this proposed approach. For example, Dai and colleagues used our method to train faster RCNN and region FCN and consistently got a three point boost. In fact, both of these methods used the ResNet network architecture, which will be presented next. This shows that our method can be easily applied to other detectors and network architectures. So in conclusion, we proposed a simple online bootstrapping algorithm for region-based object detectors, which gives consistent and significant boosts in performance while simplifying training. Thank you. So thanks, Abhinav, for this excellent presentation. Uh, one question I would have is, could you please comment more on using all boxes versus using only the hard mind ones? Um, most of the examples will have zero loss, so the gradient will be very small. So could you just amplify those examples that the gradient is not zero, or that would lead to noisy noise gradients? Uh, so the question was, uh, 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 for this setup where we use, can use all the examples instead of just the hard ones, and whether amplifying the low loss examples will help. So I believe amplifying just the low loss examples will lead to uh, noisy backdrops. Uh, the main problem here is non-hard examples or easy examples which have close to zero loss diluting the impact of hard examples. So what you need is uh, some form of adaptive learning rate strategy where you at least get some magnitude of backdrop uh, when you are, you are using all regions, uh, the kind of magnitude that you get when you only use hard regions. So you don't want to dilute your backdrops uh, using the easy regions. Uh, 